Hello and welcome, Vault Dwellers, to the Daily Up Show, a show about the things we love and hate about post-apocalyptic Appalachia, with various topics and nonsense to cover about Fallout 76. Here's our host, Dubethum. Good evening and welcome back to another Daily Op Show. I am your host, Keith Dubethum. Joining us first tonight is Avery. He's the first against the wall when the revolution comes. Come on in, Avery. Oh, boy. I didn't get a good look at that. That is, um... It's a lot. That is a lot. A little bulgy in the front. You sure you should sit like that? You can cross my legs. I Can you? Not too much. Let me try. <laughs> And joining us tonight again is Old Man. He is old but not forgotten. Come on in, Old Man. Evening, all. Not sure if I'll sit next to Avery now. He's going to be that man spreading, is he? Uh, he is. Yeah, he's going to mean explain some things to all of us here in a few minutes. Um, it's a real Patch Adams look you got going on there. Yeah, the good stuff's at the dry cleaners. That's gotcha. all I got to wear. Nah, I hear you. A long way. Well, Avery was telling me I should keep some suits in the back. Um, put them up, you know, on display so that... Oh, oh you'd have, have a decent options. wardrobe set. I know. Yeah, he said I should. I just uh, didn't take him seriously. Now I understand why I should have listened to him. Um, so, yeah, that out of the way, uh, we got to kick the tires on today's topic. So, the first thing I wanted to talk about uh, today was plan dilution. And when I say that, I mean learning crappy plans for the sake of knowing plans. And it's something that I'm guilty of. Um, and we want to talk about the pros and cons. So, Avery, what do you think about learning plans that you're never going to use? Right. I am not a completionist. Uh, I will not go out of my way to learn a plan that I don't care about. Uh, there's still, like, base weapon plans in this game that I haven't bothered to buy or learn. Uh, it's not something that's on my radar, but I am obsessed with getting plans for clothes, or backpack skins or weapon skins, that kind of thing. So uh, when it comes to that, even if I figure I'll never use it, I'll do it. Uh, similarly, if there's like a camp item, like plushie or something, chances are I'll never use it, but I might. And when I haven't learned those things, I often, six months down the road, kicked myself for not having it because it's the exact thing I need. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, uh, so yeah, I'm kind of the opposite. I, I'm it's hard for me not to collect uh old man what's your take on it uh plan dilution sucks um yeah i've i've got to have all the plans but just the amount of grinding you have to do now to get the ones you don't have um there's not much point in even having a look at player vendors anymore um to see if they've got plans you haven't got because i've got most of them it's just they just seem to be making it harder and harder to get the the last few remaining ones yeah. Well, and if you find them, you in particular, if you found a plan in a vendor, would you consider it to have been found? Um, no, I don't really consider it to be found. As I said the other, the other day, yesterday. You've got to find it yourself, in, right? Yeah, I've done that many coins so far, and technically I still have not got a set of um, ultrasight calibrated shock planes. Yeah, I've, I've got them, but I haven't got them from the event. I yeah. tried to give a pair a, a plan that I had got from that event to you, and you said no. <laughs> so uh, the, yeah. the one thing that that I wish I had known earlier in the game, because coming from four, this wasn't an issue. Um, but I wish I had thought about uh, what it actually meant to learn the bad armor and weapon plans, because if you don't know the plans. They won't drop legendary variants for you. You'll never get a legendary walking cane if you don't know how to make a walking cane. Is that true? Yeah, because I've got stuff that I I have gotten, but I don't know the plans for it. Like railway right? Maybe it's just locked to the uh, the plans you have to purchase then, because I know like the tenderizer. Maybe. You can't get a tenderizer unless you know the plan. You can't get the Gauss shotgun unless you know the plan. You can't get the or the fixer. Arm. Yeah, right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, the the fixer was a big one that everybody was chasing the plan for because you can't get the drops. So maybe it's just the post uh, post launch weapons and armor. That uh, yeah, because it's 
it's the same as some of the recipes you got you got the recipes given to you for just picking items mm -hmm. um not necessarily finding the plan for it uh, i can't think of a good example Wait, off the top of my head now oh yeah, uh, like the like outlet that. uh recipe oh you yeah have to pick up the outlet and you learn the recipe but it doesn't even tell you yeah there's a few few like that yeah. uh, and i think maybe weapons are the same some of the early weapons that you if you scrap them you may have got the the ability to craft the weapon i mean i'm sure there's geniuses out there that have figured it out yeah yeah but i suppose uh my two cents as far as that would be uh for anyone watching at home um if you don't want to get legendary drops for a weapon don't learn the plan same for armor um, and then you won't like you know, you're never going to use a Crusader pistol. Pistols are awful in 76. Oh, they're Not great. It's my tagging weapon. If yeah, they used to be worth something, but since the one Wastelanders, pistols are, yeah, yeah, and the melee weapons are pretty worthless now. It's just, I just, I can't justify giving up my agility tree for a pistol. But, on to the next topic tonight. Um... I'm sure you guys have both noticed. Why is it so goddamn laggy lately? Oh, oh no, I it's it's, that they're duping again. Yeah, that's one of the the reasons I've heard. Or uh, they also put it, it always seem to have this issue after a patch, mm -hmm. um, where they still haven't sorted things out. But we actually just on another server a little while ago, the server crashed out during a coin event. The server crashed out last week while Dagger and I were trying to get into Radiation Rumble. And we all tried to jump to the event and the instance wouldn't load. Uh, and we just stayed in the loading screen for 10 minutes. Uh, server didn't crash, server was fine, but the instance was done. Uh, I wonder if it's appropriate to lay the blame at Custom Worlds and some mm. new appropriation of the virtual server uh, hardware could be hmm. possibly the one thing that i've noticed beyond a shadow of a doubt is anytime i try to get into my power armor server not responding i don't think either uh, you to use power armor do you i oh, use uh, it for the coin right we just we just did but yeah i i froze after i got in it just stood there couldn't do anything yeah it's been uh, real bad for me with power armor lately which might go back to the dupe because the the dupe that's going around right now is for power armor Right, yeah. so they might have put something into place so you can't get it into the back one. Who knows? Okay, yeah, that's the way they solve all the other, all the other dupes. They just extend the loading times out. <laughs> yeah. With that out of the way, let's go ahead and move on to our next topic. Um, what is it about Fallout seventy six that that keeps you coming back, old man? Oh, surprisingly enough, Fallout seventy six is the first. Um, online game I've played and actually got into because of the player base most of the other online games like uh, your battlefield series call of duties there's just complete idiots there that ruin it for everybody um yeah sure fallout 76 started with a lot of griefing and uh, people are grief you they blow up your camp they do all this stuff but over a whole the, the player base um makes a multiplayer experience more enjoyable that's the main thing yeah, I'm in, I'm inclined to agree with you. Uh, Avery, do you feel the same way? And if so, why do you think that is? Uh, yeah, I'd say that's the reason I keep coming back. Um, I was... Pardon me. Uh, you can edit that part. Uh, I was playing by myself for, I don't know, four or five months by the time I uh, got my team. And I, I was not ready to glance off of it at that point, but I was seeing the end, right? You could sort of see what the end game by yourself was going to be and it was kind of a lonely experience even though there's all these people running around uh but having people that you could interact with and sort of like live this experience with to a degree uh really brought it around for me and uh filled in all the gaps you know being able to uh say hey i think this is how this works what do you think or hey i built this really cool thing come and check it out Hey, um, let's throw of... together a talk show in a basement. See, <laughs> see if we can put that shit up on YouTube. 
Some sure, like sure. that sort of stuff. <laughs> that kind of thing. Like, uh, for me, it was... I couldn't go back to Fallout 4 because I hadn't... Because it, that didn't feel as real as Fallout 76 did uh, in terms of, like, a living and breathing place. Mm -hmm. uh, but until I found other people that sort of had that similar mindset, uh, it didn't feel... It felt, like, a bit more hostile. Uh, and so it became more friendly when I found people who were more friendly. Yeah. And they weren't just trying to pick fights. Yeah, and I just met I just met a new uh, a new person joined our jolly gang uh, earlier this morning. I met a new guy, um, who seems like he's gonna fit right in. And we find new I mean we lose people all the time, right? People move on to other games, but we find new folks all the time too. Yeah, there's always a, a good exchange rate, I suppose you could call it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's got that kind of player base. There's a lot of good people. There's Somebody on our Discord the other day was talking about how uh, one of the things that makes a game for them was to find low-level players and help them out. You know? Uh, yeah, and that's I how don't I know met, another game like that. That's how I met this other guy. He was like, hey, uh, you know, I see you're kind of a high level. Do you think you can whip me up some mutations? And I was like, sure. And, you know, and then we just got to bullshitting, and, he, and I, I was like, hey, you know, you should get herbivore if you use guns because then you can get your brain fungus and your cranberry relish and you'll level up much faster and he's like oh hey while we're at it can you upgrade my excavator i'm like yeah let's upgrade that and you know we ran a bunch of nukes together and seems like a good dude and i think that's um you know kind of goes back to what you're talking about the the random strangers that you find in fallout 76 aren't the random strangers that you find in call of duty yeah uh, what are the big when they had their first free week wasn't it um and a lot of people were trying it and i know where's a group did it i know other groups did it you just made packages for the for the new people you know a, a 10 mil pistol with hardened receivers that sort of stuff some cheap armor that you could drop for them yep. so you give them like a starter pack um, yeah give them some under help armor, them get them some up. heavy yeah. leather a machete and some sort of gun yeah because there's now yeah, was it You've got to go down to the wayward end. You know, there's there's nothing more dull destroying than getting killed 50 times just trying to make it from the from the entrance to the vault down to the wayward end. Right. Uh, and put you off the game. Dagger in the early days of bending had a shop right at the bottom of Vault 76 of stairs, um, and he would meet people as they came out, give them a like a mini tutorial, and I don't know how these people probably thought that he was. An NPC or something <laughs> too helpful, uh, but he would lead them to his vendors. He would drop a bunch of gear for them. He'd sort of walk them through um, some of the systems that they hadn't discovered yet. Like he, he never moved his camp for like a month, uh, and that was like that was his day That's job kind of thing. Him, yeah, uh, yeah. Like he was—he's a guy who always makes new bases, but he committed to that bit for a while just to help people out, yeah. just because he loved the game that much. Yeah, I had, I had a camp up there where I had a, uh, this was back in the day when uh, the vending machines were split up individually. I had a Bambi vending machine. Um, it was, um, so you know when you start going down the path and just off to the left there's like a little watchtower? So I built a uh, giant chessboard floating out into the sky off of that little cliff. And I had a bunch of chess pieces on it and right before that I had like a little lounge and one of the vending machines just had the level two under armor you know not the one that requires flux but the other one right underneath that um it had like 10 of those in it a bunch of garbage i shouldn't say garbage it's good if you're level five you know um but just a ton of stuff in it and then one day like a level 400 just came and cleaned it all out to sell it in the vendor and then i moved right. to camp yeah, there's how still many one how many hundred people would have seen it by that point though? Oh my god, tons, tons. You never right, like that's you know, good odd. All the items were one cap, so I, I knew when a Bambi was buying stuff because we just go ching 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 ching. You know, one cap, one cap, right. one cap. Because I think you start with like twenty five or something. But that's gonna be all of our time for this evening. I want to thank you, fellas. You guys want to go ahead and uh, and say good night. No worries, I'll catch you next time. Sorry, bad chat. All right, thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you on the next episode. Have a great night, everybody.
Thanks once again for tuning into our broadcast. If you enjoyed our show, please give us a good old-fashioned Vault Boy thumbs up by hitting that like button. If you really enjoyed the show, please subscribe. If you'd like to meet the cast, visit our Discord. Link in the doobly-doo below. Please leave your questions, comments, concerns, and emotional outbursts in the comments section. Please join us next week for another radioactive episode of the Daily Ops Show. Stay safe out there, Wastelanders.